Hey guys, it's Avangel and welcome back to the channel. And today we're taking a look at the brand new DC3 that came with the 40th anniversary update from Aeroplane Heaven. Now, this is a great plane. It has some faults, but it's a great plane. And it has some nuances too that are very unusual to a lot of people. So we're going to have a look at some of those today. And we're going to have a general look at the aircraft. And maybe some features you do and don't know exist. Now, there are two variants in your install. You'll have both the classic and retrofit the classic is fully 1930s 40s the retrofit does have gps and autopilot on the central console as we look at a car's bumper which looks fantastic mmm low poly let's go down and take a look at the airplane shall we so this is a retrofit version which comes equipped with gps systems in here in fact it's gonna knock the power on for a second i still have a radio glitch whereby everything doubled up it's quite strange but the working title 53430 do operate here in the cockpit. Now, whilst we're on the ground, I'm going to secure the aircraft, open passenger door, and open luggage door, which are down here under the gear indicators on our side there. And we're going to go outside for a quick look, see doodle around. There we go, my controller is working today. That's the wrong button to press. I'm trying to work out which is the buttons here. that slows me down when I'm flying around and I forget what they are. Never mind. We'll make it work. Well modelled. Now there's the enhancement pack which does pump it up to apparently 4K but it's not really 4K because some bits are and some bits aren't. So it's kind of not really a true enhancement but it is offered in case you have a good, gooder. Oh my god, did I just say that? A better PC. So this is basically almost like the Canadian livery, but it's the World Travel Airlines, the law liveries, of course. Plenty of nice liveries coming out, and I do quite like the fact we have the enhancements like, you know, fire extinguishers, chocks, and even back here, this being a civilian variant rather than the full cargo door side like some of the other retrofit and classic versions, has a passenger door and a luggage compartment, meaning we have the kind of the classic passenger DC-3 appearance of this one. Now we'll just take a little quick flight up here in the cockpit. And yes, I do know about the new FS. Um, stupid camera's been weird. The passenger compartment with stuff. Does anything operate? I don't think it does. Either way. Let's head up to the cockpit and take a proper look around up there. Now the DC-3 uh, first flew in the 1930s, in fact I'm pretty sure it was 1935 was its first flight in December that year. It was produced from 1936 to 42, and then again from 1950. Over 607 were built of the, the civilian DC-3 variant, but 16,000 total of the general type were made if you include the C-47, the Navy's R-4D designated DC-3s, RAF Dakotas. Russian Lusinov I-2s, which were licensed built by Russia, and the Japanese L-2D Type-0 transport. Now, they served in every single theatre of the war. Pacific, European, Russian, Pacific, Japanese, everywhere. They were kind of everywhere. And they were often powered by the Pratt & Whitney R-1830 Twin Wasp, which is a 14-cylinder, 1,200-horsepower engine, usually fitted with the uh, three-blade Hamilton Standard 23E50 Props, which are 11.6 feet in diameter. Crazy. This thing will get up to about 200 knots max with 230 miles an hour. 180 knots cruise, 207 miles an hour. She'll stall around 68 knots or 78 miles an hour. Why am I reading out both numbers here? If you look down here at airspeed, we're going to have a mile per hour readout. So that's going to be giving us our basic instruments. Now, overall, our electronics are pretty simple here. Battery up here, ground power up here if we have it. Cold, dark start and quick start there. We'll not be touching those today. Now, we do have some things to check through. So, we first need to make sure for our startup we have our full rich, our mixture, cracked crack throttles, I should say. And then we go down to the pedestal here. I have to move those back a little bit, actually, just so we can see this. Fuel tanks to left main. And right main there push those back up keep those here go down to here this is our tailwheel lock we'll need to remember that for later parking brake is here so set 
emergency autopilot power and that doesn't work this is our pitch and aileron trim or in this case aileron and this is our rudder trim now one thing you're all going to notice when you first fly this aircraft is it can have a tendency sometimes to take off nose first look at this we're nose up on our trim so what we're going to do is we're just going to neutralize that trim on first takeoff why it's set like that i don't know but this is what tends to result in you going nose up so cow flaps fully open for start let's pull in all those toys from the outside we're going to open those windows to get some nice sound as we get this thing started these open as well really just a ground thing you don't want to do that in the air <laughs> okay so flap indicators here speed got our manifold our rpm is it in here? Fuel pressure, oil pressure, fuel t uh, gauge selector. So this is our left aux to left main, right main, right aux, depending on what we have filled. So we're going to run off this for now just to keep a good eye on things. Manifold selectors here. So we're going to do normal engine instruments. Over here we have co-pilot's instruments. We have oil temperatures, cylinder temperatures, carb air, DIC pressure, hydraulic pressure. We have our temperatures usual gubbings up here switch that to our actual navigation mode superchargers here now i will say texture wise this is not as fantastic as this beaver look at this chunky polys and the texture just wraps over it looks a bit clunky really from this distance the cockpit feels right scale wise but this does feel like it's the older airplane heaven dc3 ported in and upgraded upgraded is good and I like the fact there's a retrofit version. Um, would have preferred the retrofit version have some more modern instruments here, like knots, like a proper artificial horizon, for example, a HSI. It doesn't have that, so we'll go with what we've got. Now, of course, lots of things are unclickable in the aircraft, but they're, you know, they're nice to see. I wish they'd have worked, but they don't. So it is what it is. Right, start up. Let's get on with that, shall we? So boost pumps are on. Fuel pressure is good. Okay, so we're going to get ready to start our right engine first. You typically start the right engine because you're loading passengers with the left. So energizing, we're going to wait for about a good 15 counts. So I'm going to use my video recording here as an indicator of time as we talk. I'm going to make sure our mags are set to both. Ignition is in. Primer we'll need in a second, so keep an eye on that. Okay, we're good for a start here. Nothing happened. Why did nothing happen? That's really weird. Why did nothing happen? Oh, that's why nothing happened. I wasn't actually energizing it because the settings in too many positions. It can get a little confusing at times. So we're going to give that a count. So we're waiting for the 15. Keep the primer off. So once that hits 15, we give it about 15 seconds on the energize. We are good. And give it a bit of juice. Give it a bit of throttle. And we have a live engine. There we go. Okay, so let's try and wiggle this stupid thing. Into position. We're again counting here, so we're waiting for 15. And mesh is still down again, so it's left, right for energize. Mesh is just a one switch for either or. So whichever's energizing is what it meshes. So we're good here, so. Meshing, meshing, meshing. Give it some primer. Give it a bit of the throttle. Let her think about it got a good start okay so that's off 
Prime is off. Both pips are staying on. Let's close one of these so I can think a little bit. Keeping that open. So now we have two good engines. Let's make sure we turn our ground power off before we do anything else. Ground power has been removed. Let's close these about 50%. Okay, so taxing the DC-3 can be a little bit challenging. Parking brake is disengaged. Let's turn my head on here. Tailwheel does steer, so we're going to turn her around. And don't forget, you've also got the ability without the tailwheel to go... A little bit of differential braking and or using the engine to do it. And I've just gone a bit too wide on that turn because of the engine turn. But you can literally turn and steer with the engines on the ground as well. There we go. So let's stop here. Turn her onto the active runway. Now my sim is looking a little potato right now because I still have to have my data turned off because of the stupid performance right now. And I can't make it work. So being quite a tight set of taxiways not built for DC3. So we're just going to hold here for a second while I talk about some numbers for you. So in terms of numbers... Now, takeoff, we need about 1,600 feet with no flaps. Landing, we need about 2,500 feet with full flaps, 45 degrees. And this is considering sea level, no headwind, and 15 Celsius or so temperatures, and a hard surface. Bear those in mind. Now, normally, we'll be 800 to 1,000 RPM for taxi. And when we're taking off, uh, normal RPM range is 1,600 to 2,500 for flight. For takeoff, we're looking at 40 inches power on the manifold down there, 2,750 on the RPM. At 50 knots, the tailwheel should come up, and at 84 knots, or 97 miles an hour, we're going to rotate, okay? We'll climb out at 121 miles an hour, or 105 knots, and then we'll talk about landing when we get there. So let's get ourselves out of the runway here. Okay, there we go. Let's get ourselves more centered a little bit here. Plenty of runway. Okay, we're going to stop and I'm going to give us one notch flaps. And I'm going to have to go down here. And set our tailwheel latch. Okay. Let's set our 48 inches. And we're rolling. So we should feel the tail come up uh, just around 60 miles an hour. I need more rudder, come on. A little bit of toe brake just to nudge her over to the left. Okay, tail's up. We've got rudder authority. We've got rudder authority. Looking for 84 or 5, and she's lifting off because she's light. So we're good there. So we're clearing the fence, we'll gear up. A little bit of nose down trim. Flaps are going to clean up here. I'm going to pull this power back here to about 43. Bringing back my RPM into the green here. Now the aircraft is a bit of a pig. Bear that in mind. She's a heavy old girl. You've really got to treat her with a little delicacy. You've really got to treat with a little delicacy. She's heavy, ungainly, and you've got to think ahead of time. If anything, treat her a bit like a turboprop. You're thinking about things before you do them and when you'll need them. You can react pretty well on the DC-3, and we'll show you that when we do some landing here, but you do need to be very considerate to the fact that this aircraft is heavy, it is big, it is ungainly, it has huge control surfaces, and it takes a lot of time to do things, and you have to plan ahead. So in terms of our approach, we'll be doing 105 kind of in the general uh, downwind, which is what we'll be entering here. And we're looking for 90 over the fence, so 104 miles an hour. So we want to keep her relatively quick. 120 miles an hour is what we're looking for downwind. A little bit of jerkiness in the sim still, unfortunately. Yeah, 
The aircraft is very responsive, very well behaved. The flight model isn't bad in this. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. Not that bad. Some of the modeling and textures could be improved, I think. It does feel like it's been imported up. I'm not a huge fan of the modernized version here where they just took out the Sperry Autopilot and slapped in those instruments on that part. I would have liked a different couple of instruments on the actual panels. So we're sitting here at 120 and we're looking good. So we're going to go down just level with this mountain in front of us and we'll start our turn for base. We're leaving the boost pumps on the whole time here because we're about to come in for landing again. You'll want this on for takeoff and landing. So as you see there, do not lower landing flaps with an airspeed exceeding 112 miles an hour, which we'll be looking for soon. Let's pull this speed back here. So we've got our indication there, it's the yellow marker on our airspeed, which is our flap speed, so we're going to give ourselves a notch, two notches of flaps there, maybe about 20 degrees. So we're going to start thinking about our base turn here. I'm going to pop the gear down now in the downwind. Give a little bit of after trim. Just to kind of neutralize her out in this position. We're going to want to pick a bit more throttle in here. Or we're going to hold the throttle. We're about 15 or 1600 or 16 inches on the manifold. So we're going to roll her round and let our speed be dictated as we need to get the nose down here by our pitch. We're looking for about 105, so that white marker there just after the 100. We're going to 110, we need to watch our flap speed. There we are there. Yeah, this is nowhere near as kind as the Beaver on FPS, by the way. This is a much heavier hitter. Not by much, but it is a heavier hitter. If you need to manage your approach with a bit more of power, you can. Okay, so I'm going to give it another notch of flaps here. Go for half flaps there. And we're going to roll her in for final here, but we need to get our speed up here. that up. Okay. Power's coming back here because we're pitching down. We need to come over a bit to the left. Now you can still, by the way, side slip a DC-3. She will absolutely do it. But I don't want to do that right now because I'm already kind of on the right profile here for my approach. A bit more power. We don't want it to stall. You can spin a DC-3 and it's horrible. So a bit more power here. And we're going to just bleed that off as we come across our approach. Make sure we're lined up well here. Now remember, being a tail dragger, we don't want to get the nose up as we come in for our landing approach here. So just manage that carefully. Gonna stay slightly lower on the glide slope than you might with some aircraft. Little bit slow here. So I'm going to let it speed up a little bit as we pitch down. Deploy the full flaps here. And this is where you start to really think about what you're actually trying to put down on and where. So I'm pitching for speed here. Which we're going to bleed as soon as we flare. A little bit wavy, it's my bad. We're going to do a wheel landing here. Touchdown. Brakes being applied. Hello. That was the scuffiest landing I've ever done. In a DC-3 at least. Dear God, that was unpleasant. I feel like I need to do that again. Okay, so we're turning in final again. I That was awful. A terrible example, really. 
and we're going to line ourselves up on the runway a little bit shorter in the pattern this time by and we're going to maintain that kind of approach angle here and I'm looking for my full flaps no wrong direction on the flap lever so keep it just here now depending on how short the runway is you can go a little bit slower I'm going to run it just about 90 right now on miles an hour so a little bit slower than 104 but you kind of want to judge it where you're going and I'm going to have to pull up here as we start to approach the runway. Now you can land on the wheels or you can land in the three point. It depends on how you want to fly the aircraft. But right now I'm just going to let her come in here. And she has light so it always makes a difference to the aircraft there. I'm going to go for the wheels here. Positive touchdown. little sashing come on fat girl stop there we go bring the tail down keep her on the black stuff that's important ah. fall back on the yoke here whilst you're braking because you are of course still a tail dragger and then we can release the where would it be be under here tail wheel lock is released so we know our taxiway is right over there, so we can go forwards here. Give it some beans, get it rolling, and then pull back on course once you've got the moment movement going. Obviously, you're going to need to give it a little bit more power than 800 to 1,000 RPM to get her moving. She is big. Thank you. Again, I really understand you've been struggling extremely hard since the update for Sobo and Microsoft, but I'd love to be able to play the sim properly. It'd be fantastic. Thank you tiny tiny taxiway not exactly pleasant but we can actually knock those boots from myself now and have a slightly quieter experience there we go look at that the corners on that window are not my favorite part of this aircraft so yeah landings can be a handful this is my third landing in the aircraft since the sim update um i must say i spent thousands of hours in the manfred yarn one and earlier versions in fsx and p3d it's one of my favorite aircraft and this one is not disappointing, I will say that. It is not exciting, but it's not disappointing, if that's the best way to put it. Aeroplane Heaven have done a decent job. There are bits I do not like, and there are bits that you can definitely tell are part of it being, at least appears to be ported over from the FSX version, or the P3D version, but it is not awful. Okay. There we go. We're touched down and we are stopped here at Orcas Island. And our camera is still somehow in <laughs> the fuselage. Impressive. I do like this aircraft. It has potential. I think it needs a couple of patches. There are some handling issues in terms of how she actually behaves closer to the landing speed. And why the trim is set nose up from the start, I'm not sure. But you do need to neutralize that trim to zero before you take off and she'll behave normally on takeoff roll. The power setting should be good, but I found this one does feel like it's too fast and the bite between too fast and being able to three-point it and a stall are incredibly tight, unlike it should be. The aircraft does sometimes let you really kind of come in there for that beautiful floaty landing, but it does need a bit of a headwind. Right now we don't have one, so there is that. Uh, sounds are decent enough. They're not perfect, but they're decent. Uh, the texturing is, is okay, but it's not wonderful. Um, that's for example, not a DC-3 fuselage. I don't know what that is, but that's not how the panel lines work on a DC-3. And that's some chunky-ass welding and zigzag stuff there on the engine cowling. Yeah. There's, there's indications that there are panels, but I don't think they're the right panels per se. It's not bad. Definitely could be a lot better, and we'll see what happens. Either way, thanks for watching. Hopefully you'll at least learn something from this. And uh, again, not every landing you make is going to be perfect, but you can at least try and try again. Bye.